I was talking about your van trip, which, of course, you've canceled because you got things, uh, you have some allegations against some football players at home. Does that mean you're not doing any of the van trip at all? Well, first priority is obviously things that are going on here at Michigan State, but I'll have plenty of opportunity to get out and see games. I'm just going to do them a little bit more, uh, like one day at a time. See, that's to me, that's the reality show that you guys need to do. Like, just get a camera. You can wear, <laughs> you wear like a GoPro, right? You in the van. You're like stopping at rest stops, pulling into a gym, walk in, you look down, it shows some of your notes. Like that's the kind of stuff that, that we want to see. Any chance we'll see that in the near future? Not likely this year. It's uh, We're, we're going to take more back, back to the traditional route, just go down, watch games, be, uh, be present, and then get ready for Selection Sunday. What was the process like of putting together this uh, Top 16, the bracket preview that we saw Saturday on CBS, in comparison to how you actually prepare the real bracket? Well, I think it was, you know, we do this every February as part of the mock process, and this was just a little bit different in that we had to refine down to the, the 16 teams, something that was going to be delivered publicly. I think, um, you know, for the most part, a bigger challenge because of fewer games that we had the opportunity to see, especially when making some of those decisions on head-to-heads and, and uh, common opponents just because there weren't as many. And, um uh, that got a little cumbersome in the third fourth, and then as you kind of would project down to the fifth line, many teams that are so close um, that the difficulty in separating those two uh, became very apparent. Mark Hollis joining us. He's the athletic director at Michigan State, and of course he's the head of the NCAA Select Committee for this year's NCAA tournament. He's joining us in the Doug Gottlieb Show here on CBS Sports Radio. All right, so most of us who are fans and follow this thing are like, well, there's no, there's no Wisconsin who was in first place until last night. There's no Purdue. There's no Maryland. Like, these are all teams with good records. And we've been paying attention to the fact that, with the exception maybe of Indiana, the Big Ten hadn't performed well out of conference. So is it crazy to say that you guys weren't terribly impressed with your own, again, you're an athletic director in your own conference, and you're, you know, even Michigan State has struggled in the non-conference with the crazy difficult schedule. Is it crazy to think? To, to take for to read that and go hey they don't think the big Ten's any good oh no not at all i think it's a situation where there's a lot of uh parity around the country there's a lot of parity within the big 10 and um, like i said many of those teams were so close that you could you could split them just with with the finest distance and um i i, I don't view it too negatively on the big picture i think there's some obvious frustration in the uh the fan base of the big 10 and looking at it but um as the AD at Michigan State, not too concerned for the Big Ten going forward. Okay, so but why why wasn't there a Big Ten team in that top 16? Because there's 10 votes in the room, and, and as going through the process and looking at resumes, um, which, as you know, are, are still sorted by a, an RPI process, um, the decisions were made that, you know, when opportunities were there for certain teams, who did what? If you looked at the team sheets, uh, they sort of came forward that, um, other programs were in a position at that point in time um, to be higher on the seed list. And uh, yet there's many games to play, and I think there'll be some movement, some variations in it. And uh, you'll see you'll see quite a bit of moving around. Mark Hollis joining us. He's Michigan State's athletic director. Uh, what about what about Michigan State? Like, that's one of those, how <laughs> do you, I mean, and I don't know, did you step out of the room like you're going to have to step out of the room in March? We did. We, we put the full rules in, and uh, in fact, Kevin White, you know, when Duke was up, he was out. And when Florida was up, he was out for uh, for his son coaching down there. So we, we played by the rules in the, in the mock process. Individuals stepped out um, when their teams were talked about. And, and then you also don't vote in those in those regions where your teams are being discussed. So if, you know, if, if Creighton, for example, when they were discussed in that 3-4 yep. range. Yeah, it's really hard. Uh, Bru- Bruce not only is not in there, but he's he's out of the room and can't vote in that in that part of the process. But Creighton, you bring up Creighton. That's a it's a great question. I think most of us who've been following are going to have because if you watch Creighton early in the season, like wow, that's a a one through three seed, right? That's a really talented team. But they lose right. their point guard, and so I mean, look, the what's always happened before is. You know, we'll take them down a seat or two, and we judge them based upon the team that's going to the tournament. But so do you Do you cut off, like, how do you work in the numbers when so much of the numbers are supported by a team that had Maurice Watson leading the country in assists right. as a fifth-year senior point guard? How do you handle that? Yeah, and there's there's quite a few examples of that this year and something that we'll go through. It's, it's, you don't put, uh, you don't change a loss to a win. 
Um, you know, that's not the solution, but you are aware of teams that are, are missing, um, missing student athletes at different points in the season. I think in the Creighton case, you have an opportunity to see the team play without. I think it becomes more challenging when uh, a student athlete maybe is injured closer to conference tournament time. And right. that's where the uncertainty comes and you have to gather the information the best you can. You take that into consideration, but you're still picking the 36 best teams based on the, the results that they have on the sheets. Mark Hollis joining us. He's the athletic director at Michigan State. He's kind of to spend some time with us because he's also the uh, head of the selection committee for the NCAA tournament. Uh, and they had their bracket preview, first time ever in which they revealed the top 16 teams if the tournament were to begin at noon on Saturday. Which uh, is outdated now, right? It's it was outdated. out. It was outdated like it was outdated like 15 minutes later. Like, damn, Florida State loses, <laughs> Butler loses. Like, ah, here we go. And, which it, it's it's funny, but that that again is it's college hoops. And I, I saw one writer, uh, Jeff Eisenberg, said like, hey, if the same thing was done last year, Iowa would have been a one seed, and Wisconsin would have been out as of right, now, right? right? As of now, it's a, it's it's what's, which which brings me to the question I've always wondered, like. I do, I actually like the idea of the eye test, which is, we like, you go see a team, you get a totally different feel. But a lot of that, Mark, is, like, the specific game that you, like, if you just happen to tune in and see a team when they play terrible, you're like, I, I don't care what the numbers are. That's a hard image to get out of your head. You've done this for a while. How do you differentiate between what your eye has seen and what the numbers tell you? Well, I have a hard time with the eye test because it's, uh, you know, we don't care how good a team looks coming into the airport. It's the results that, that come out, and it's, it's all in how you define that. Um, what, what our charge is and what's in our, in our principles is what has the team done with the opportunities that they've had. And as you do that, it's, pretty, you know, it's a pretty black and white process there that it, here are the numbers, here are the wins, here are the losses, and then here are all the other factors that come into play that every committee member has to take into consideration. Um, they look at, we all look at, um, what does a trend look like in games that are played? Did the loss happen in, in a stretch during a, uh, a tough time? But you're still looking at the results. You're looking at the outcome of games. You're looking at, again, the RPI is still the sorting mechanism. So yep. you're using the RPI, and you can argue um, you, you have to have a way to sort. You have to have a way to figure out, okay, when you're on the road and you lose to a, a 125, what does that mean when you lose to a 50 at home? What does that mean? And those are the those are the things that the committee really spends time looking at. It is results, 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 and tries to tries to differentiate between one team and the other. 